there's been a lot of talk lately about how to set up a dual battery system and the difference between a smart battery oscillator and a BC-DC charger. So I want to introduce Greg. Greg, thanks for meeting us, mate. No worries, Lars. And um, do you just want to talk us through exactly what a smart ba battery oscillator does yep. and how it charges the batteries and how that um, performs against a BC-DC charger? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So just a bit of background on how a charging system works. You have, in a standard vehicle, you have an alternator and you have your battery. So your alternator, when the engine's running, charges the battery and it's designed by the factory to charge a starting battery. It's not really designed to charge an auxiliary battery, but it can do an okay job. So a smart battery isolator is this little unit here. And essentially what it does is when the engine starts running and the alternator charge comes up to a certain voltage point, uh, this unit then joins your auxiliary battery to your start battery. And it will do somewhat of an okay job depending on what you're gonna use your auxiliary battery for. If you're just going to be jump starting from your auxiliary battery and running a few accessories for short periods of time, um, it'll do an all right job. Okay. Um, what complicates matters is modern alternators. So a normal alternator will charge from about 13.5 to 14.5 volts and it will do that same voltage all the time. So if you don't know much about electricity, voltage is kind of like your water pressure in a pipe. And when people talk about current, that's the amount of water that's flowing in that pipe. So when you get a modern alternator, they can actually change their voltage or water pressure. And when you're trying to send uh, power down a long cable via one of these type of arrangements or just by joining one battery to another, they will never get that auxiliary battery fully charged. Um, so that's why these can work in some situations. Uh, but that's when BCDCs really come into their own. Yeah. And how does it work? So say I've got my, my starting battery and I've got a lead acid battery as my house battery and I want to switch that out to say a lead crystal battery or a lithium ion battery. Yeah. Um, I won't be able to use my, my alternator at all then, will I? No, that's right. So with deep cycle batteries, which is what you usually use as your auxiliary battery, they are completely different in terms of build to a start battery. So they require a lot of the times a higher voltage to get them to 100% charge. And if you think of your start battery as just kind of like a, a tank full of water, and when you crank the engine, a lot of that water comes out really fast, starts the engine, and then the alternator fills it back up to a certain point, and that's fine. Your deep cycle battery is like a water tank that always wants to be full, because when you, uh, I guess, turn your engine off and you're running your accessories like your lights and your water pump and your fridge, etc., and your four-wheel drive, you want all of those accessories to run for as long as possible. So you want that battery to be full. Uh, and that's where a DC to DC charger comes in because depending on the battery, you need to charge it at the correct rate, at the correct voltage for the correct amount of time. Otherwise you'll damage the battery. Uh, and alternatively, if you're not giving it enough voltage, like if the voltage is too low, you'll never get it full. Therefore, you're not getting your money's worth out of it. And I mean, you spend good money on these kind of batteries, you know, anything from 500 to 1,000 to even $2,000. So you really want to have something that's going to look after those batteries. That's and right. Your, your BCDC charger, that's got the, all the charge profiles built in for the different types of batteries. Isn't yeah, it? that's exactly right. So we've got four different charge profiles built into our 1225D and 1240D uh, BCDC chargers. So these are a high powered DC to DC battery charger with the three stages of boost, absorption and float, which a deep cycle battery really needs to get it to 100%. Um, so they're basically like a mains charger you'd have at home, like a really high quality mains charger that you'd charge your batteries all the way back up to full, but it's running from either a 12 or 24 volt alternator and it also acts as a solar regulator as well. So you can have one charger in your 4x4 or your RV and when you're off grid, you're going to be charging from solar and from your alternator whenever the engine's running. So you're getting the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. You're doing the best by that expensive deep cycle battery you've just invested in. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking kind of three to four hundred dollars and up for a good battery, you know why wouldn't you get a good charger to make sure that you're getting your money's worth out of it? So what we've got here is a display case that really demonstrates exactly what uh, these BCDCs actually do and the relation between input voltage, output voltage, and input current and output current. And what you'll see is basically showing exactly why you use these on a deep cycle battery. So essentially our battery that we're charging at the moment is accepting 19 to 20 amps. We're still outputting 14.4 volts, which is what we've set this charger at and what the battery it, it wants. But you can see that we're actually getting a really, very low voltage into the charger, which is what happens when you have long cable runs from one battery to another. And you can see the relation between current. So a lower voltage on the input means we have to draw more current, okay? 
to basically get our higher voltage at a lower current on the output. So a, a normal VSR or a smart battery isolator type arrangement just won't do this. They can't handle it. If you put 12.3 volts onto a deep cycle battery, it's essentially a waste of time. You can't charge a battery at that voltage, but you can see that our charger and in a normal uh, setup, you would put the charger right next to the auxiliary battery that we can accept that low voltage of 12.3 volts and we can still get our output voltage that we, require, that we require and our output current as well. And you'll see that as I bring the vehicle voltage up, nothing changes on the output, but we're just drawing less current to do it. And that's exactly what happens with an alternator is the voltage does fluctuate. So that gives you a real world uh, working example of why you use a DC to DC charger. All right, so obviously there's a lot of information to take in. Yep. But what, when it comes down to it, what's the difference between the, the smart battery isolator and the BCDC? What is it going to do for my battery? Yeah, so your deep cycle battery is always going to run better off a DC to DC charger, um, no matter what, because we're getting it to 100% full. It means that you're gonna, your accessories are going to last longer and the battery is going to last longer. Your smart battery isolator will do somewhat of an alright job and they do have their place but it all depends on your alternator that you've got in your vehicle and it also depends what you're going to be using your deep cycle battery for. If your deep cycle auxiliary battery is just for cranking and running a fridge like overnight or something then you may be able to get away with an SBI. Uh, if your alternator is up to it, if it's a normal alternator, but if you're going to be running that deep cycle battery to be running fridges and lights and a lot of accessories and drawing it down really deep, you really need a DC to DC charger. And if you throw into the mix smart alternators or temperature compensating alternators, you have to have a DC to DC charger or the SBI just won't work. And it really pays to do quite a bit of research before you start setting up your dual battery system exactly what you're going to run. Sit down, work out all the accessories you've got and how much current they're going to draw so you can decide how big of a battery you want to buy and really do your research about what kind of charging system you want to, what you want to do. I spent quite a bit of time with Greg discussing our battery setup for our camera gear and we've really come up with a system that works exactly for us and that's tailor-made for us and I suggest you really do that for yourself as well. Yeah, and also on our website on redarkelectronics.co.nz, you can go to the resources page and there is a dual battery selector uh, program that you can go through and you can put in what type of vehicle you've got, what type of battery you've got and what loads you want to run in for how long and it will tell you which is the best product for your situation. With any of the Redark range, you've got the BCDC, the Manager 30, all of the gauges, your smart battery isolators. Yep. Um, if people want more information or they want to get these products, where do they go? Yeah, okay, so you can go to our website, which is redarkelectronics.co.nz, uh, and all of our products are available throughout the ARB network nationwide as well. Yeah.